What's up guys, my name's Noah, I make music as Haterade, and you are watching The Productive Producer. I try to make stuff for this channel based on practical knowledge. And usually that's based around stuff that I'm doing a lot of lately, or something that I've encountered one of my students really needing assistance with. Lately I've been making a lot of house music, so I wanted to cover the basics of building a good, bouncy house loop, specifically with the drums. We can get into making bases and sort of maybe constructing a house tune, maybe in another video, but today we're just focusing in on the drums and the drum rack. So before we get started, I've got a free checklist to help you guys finish your music faster. It's in the description of this video. It's filled with personal tips that I use myself and I hope it helps you guys. So let's get into the video. So you can see here, we don't have anything crazy. We just have a drum rack full of good samples and a drum rack full of bad samples and this cool little bass loop from a sample pack that I have. Here's what the drum loop sounds like completed. And we are going to learn about some of those sort of mainstays of house music and how to create some extra little groove and sprinkle in some cool pizzazz in there. So we've got the same exact drum loop that we had over here with just different samples. And I, the only reason why I'm doing this right now is to illustrate that it is very important to pick good samples or at least process them better so they better fit the type of sound that you're after. So this is like just a reminder, our first loop. And then nothing, nothing changes except the samples. versus. So you wanna make sure that you're picking good samples to start out with. Otherwise, you're kinda of just shooting yourself in the foot. Okay, starting out with a blank slate, we're just gonna put kicks on every quarter note. That's an easy one. Most of you guys probably already knew that. If you didn't, if you're new at producing, that's a that's an easy one. Just drop on every single beat here, drop a kick. Make sure that your BPM is somewhere between the 120 and 129 range. Let's get a clap on every other beat. So on the two and the four, we're gonna put a clap. All the way across 16th note, closed hats. And you could do like, you could do some really crazy stuff too. Like I'm not saying that you gotta do this always, but this is just one, one method to making a cool house drum loop, right? And let's get a open hat, which sounds like that. And let's get that on every other beat in between the kick and the clap. So all together is what we have so far. Let's talk about one thing that I don't think a lot of people do, but probably pe you should, is applying a groove to your drum loop. So if we just click down here to groove, I like the New York cut. Let's turn up those closed hats there. And we can mess with the timing up here and apply it and you can see that uh, everything shifts a little bit and that just creates a, it just creates a little bit of a bounce there basically all this is doing is shifting our drum loop off the grid just a little bit to make it give it a little bit more bounce now if you wanted to keep this solely on your cymbals which i would probably recommend you'd probably want to do this outside of your drum rack because it will apply to everything. Like if I just try to apply it to only the only the cymbals, it it doesn't it doesn't do that. It applies it across the board. So I'm going to turn down the velocity on these closed hats here cuz I don't want them to be the main focus. And I'll turn up the velocity on these claps here. Now we can sort of, we can zoom in a little bit and get a little more granular. And I can press command one or command two to get, uh, to get, make the grid a little smaller. Let's th start throwing in some rim shots in here. That, that little bounce, that little swing on the inside. So that's sounding pretty good right there. And we'll just duplicate that across. So instead of having them both be this sound, you could go with, all right, I'm gonna drop it up here. Maybe a new sound up there. A 
and that could be a cool little groove for you right there. And we add that to our sidechain bass. Get some pretty cool results. You want to remember too, if you're writing, if you're starting with a bass loop like this, you probably tend to want to build your drum loop around the sample because it's harder to change that sample than it is your drum loop. Uh, but if you if you're writing your own your own drum loop first and then your own bass loop, then you want to tailor your bass loop to your drums. If that makes sense, you want you want one to be tied to the other. When they're both made independently, it's sometimes harder to get them to mesh. And that's important. We want things to mesh in our music. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Remember, if you guys really like this video, please consider clicking subscribe if you watched all the way to the end. I upload every Friday and Tuesday, and each one of you guys as a subscriber really helps out this channel. Helps tell YouTube that you guys like what I'm doing, and hopefully YouTube will decide to show my channel to other producers who might need help. So... And remember, guys, I got the free finishing music checklist in the description, totally free, and it's, from what I've been told, pretty helpful. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on Tuesday. Peace.